yeah. a history making weekend mm -hmm. in Iowa. I mean, you were there, you basically set the table for all of us. Caitlin Clark was 18 points away. She achieved the D1 scoring record in the most unlike Caitlin Clark way <laughs> possible at the free yeah. throw line, yeah. like not a logo three, which her coach was like, I'm actually glad she didn't get the record by shooting a logo three, but you were there. You set the table. Uh, the stars were out. They were, they were lined up outside of the arena, mm -hmm. ready to go. What was that scene like? So first of all, let me just say this. I went to Iowa last year for game day. It was the littest environment like that I've ever seen. Um, and then it culminated in maybe one of Caitlin Clark's, best moments when she hits that buzzer beater against Indiana to walk it off. Everybody goes crazy. She's running through the crowd. Like I was standing right there in mouth agape. So it was really cool. I wanted to go back. Like the only thing on earth that could get a black girl from the South to want to go to Iowa in the winter is Caitlin Clark. But I was into it. We were rewarded with 70 degree weather, by the way, global warming. Thank you. Um, and it was awesome. I mean, First of all, yes, we knew going in that we were going to have this great surprise for Caitlin. She always has said that she was inspired because she was a huge Minnesota Lynx fan growing up by Maya Moore. Like that was her idol. And for those of you that are a little bit more casual listeners, here's what you need to know about Maya Moore if you don't already. She's a two-time national champion at UConn, four-time WNBA champion with the Minnesota Lynx. And in the prime of her career, it would essentially be like LeBron 10 years ago, although he's kind of always still in his prime, yeah. 10 years ago, um, saying, I'm done. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna leave the sport because she had a greater purpose and mission. She wanted to get this man out of prison who was wrongfully in prison. Come to find out they're also in love. Mm. She successfully is on the team that gets him out. They get married. They have a son. They live in uh, Georgia. Maya, even when she was a huge mega generational star on the basketball court um, has always kind of kept her circle tight and not really liked to sort of be the spectacle, be in front of the camera. It's not really her thing. She's pretty low key. Maya doesn't come out often. Okay. Like almost never. In fact, there was some tweets that said maybe the greatest accomplishment Caitlin Clark has had in her career is getting Maya Moore out of the house to which Maya laughed and totally agreed. So we knew going in, we were going to be able to introduce them. They're both uh, representatives of State Farm. They both work with them as endorsement. So State Farm makes this happen, which was so cool. State Farm is our title sponsor for game day, which is all coming together. But again, like on game days, right? Like these players have routines and superstitions and schedules that they follow and they get game ready. And so we were able to pull Caitlin out of her routine. She doesn't typically do media uh, before the game, but we were able to pull her out and have this moment that happened. And it was just, it was so amazing. I think, you know, we have the, the sound for you, but if you're only listening, I want you to imagine what you know about Caitlin Clark, right? Gare Bear, like, cool, mm -hmm. calm, collected ice water in the veins. She was geeking out. So when you hear this, just imagine Caitlin with the largest smile on her face, geeking out, fangirling, screaming. Like it was everything and more when she got to meet Maya Moore. Listen, we wanted to make your dream come true. You've made so many dreams come true. State Farm knew it had been some time since you'd seen Maya. And like a good neighbor, oh, State Farm geez. is there. Maya Moore is there. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! I feel like I'm fangirling so hard. Oh my god! Thanks for being here. Hey, this is special. Oh my god! How does it feel to have? I still feel like I was this tall and freaking out, and I ran across the court, gave you a hug. I know. Now I'm like taller than you. Oh my gosh! My, how does it feel that the best player in the women's game was inspired by you? Oh man, it's a full circle moment. I remember being. 10 year old Maya going up hugging, you know, Cynthia Cooper or, or one of the, the legends. And um, just to see that we're still continuing to be able to be connected, to be inspired by each other, to be, you know, a family, right? I just, I love the connection. All, yeah. all I ever wanted to do is meet her. I didn't have a phone. I didn't, my dad didn't have his phone. So I just ran over. It's like, can you sign my shirt? Sign my shirt, gave her a hug, ran away. It's like the most vivid memory I have of like women's basketball growing up. And like, honestly, like I still tell everybody that story because it like, it meant so much to me. It's like, so cool. And I love the full circle of it all. You know, Maya talked to me afterwards and even in that clip there about how 
like for Caitlin, Caitlin was that 10 year old girl who just wanted a hug from Maya Moore at the game and still talks about her dad, like not having the cell phone. I talked to Caitlin's dad afterwards. He was like, I really wish I could go back in time and get that cell phone. She brings it up all the time, how I didn't have my cell phone. I feel like it's like the one thing I failed her at as a dad. But Maya talked about how she went to camps and it was the Cynthia Coopers of the world that she looked up to, that she idolized, that she wanted a hug from, that she wanted attention to. And I don't know, it just, it gives me the warm and fuzzies, Gary, thinking about all of the girls that Caitlin Clark hugged or spent time with or met or signed an autograph for that are going to be inspired to be like her, that I could potentially be interviewing in 10 yep. years from now if I'm lucky enough to still do game day. And I think that's what's so special about the sport is connecting each other, connecting these women and Caitlin being able to have been so generational and transformational and have been able to cross over so well that she has been able to highlight some of the contributors before the sport was super popular. And we keep talking about Lynette Woodard, who was the actual uh, highest score in um, history, but she was in the AIAW before the NCAA let women uh, play basketball before it was sanctioned. So her points don't count. And the Iowa head coach, Lisa Bluter, said uh, when um, Caitlin passed Lynette Woodard a couple of days ago, Caitlin has finally beat the real record. No disrespect to Kelsey Plum, but it was Lynette's record. And it's unfair that just because they didn't sanction women's sports back then, we just couldn't, we just don't worry about her contributions. And it was so cool, Gary. They brought Lynette Woodard to Iowa and she's standing on that court and she's receiving her flowers and everyone's just cheering for her and screaming for her. And it was just so awesome to see like Maya there. We pulled her out to have a chance to to talk to Maya about like the evolution of the women's game and the growth and about Kaylin. I don't know. It just was like it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Meanwhile, what the hell was Travis Scott doing there? <laughs> like, we're like, I was watching the clip and I'm like, oh, look. L. Duncan is the meat between this Caitlin Clark and Maya Moore sandwich right now. Yeah. Just sort of like you're going to be in these clips for forever going forward. Which is yeah. And then also, because Maya Moore, uh, about our age, I'm pretty sure. And Caitlin Clark, obviously uh, a senior in college. And the way that the scoring happens in the women's game, it's really not outside the realm of possibility that legitimately in a decade or a dozen years, maybe maybe sooner, I don't know you're back in sort of that same position. Maybe Caitlin Clark is is done playing basketball in two decades and she joins you on the set. You know, we're still young enough that we'll still be kicking around doing this damn thing. And then you can just relive it again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, um, it would be pretty, it would be pretty transformational to be able to, I mean, honestly, like we, you, to your point, you say like these records are made to be broken and all those things. And it seems her passing Pistol Pete, which was a record that no one thought, you know, anyone would yeah. ever pass, let alone a woman. is totally feasible. I mean, when you look at the women's game, like, here's what I want you guys to know. Don't be sad about Caitlin moving on. Obviously, you'll get to watch her in the WNBA. But Juju Watkins is nasty, yeah. y'all, in USC. And Hannah Hidalgo is nasty. They're number two and number three in the country in scoring, too. Like, they will be coming for those records. They are highlight worthy. I think that's the most important thing is that if Caitlin – and I, I think that there's a lot of back and forth that happens on social, Gary, about, like, well, are we only paying attention to Caitlin because, you know, she's mainstream because she's a white girl that's doing this? And no. And I, I feel like however you bring people to the sport, it doesn't matter. It's the mm -hmm. same idea as, like, people getting mad that Taylor Swift was permeating football. If it meant that you could connect with your daughters, if it meant that it brought them to football where maybe they'll enjoy the sport and stay, it doesn't matter why or how they came. And yeah. what I hope is that people understand that this goes beyond – Holly Rowe said it at – at Iowa in the middle of the court during one of the quarter breaks to the crowd. And I was so glad she said the real test as this is standing room only sellout is, will you all be here next year when Caitlin's not? Because that means that she did her job and we've done our job and appropriately growing the game. It can't just be one person. She's not just the one phenom spectacle. It's really about opening up and realizing how important this sport is. 